How is everybody doing today? Will back again for another video. I uh, hope you're enjoying the Ephesians series. We've got one more chapter after today. Uh, today has some very, very famous scriptures in it. There are a few that some people like, some people don't like, but we're going to go ahead and dive on into Ephesians chapter 5. Again, if you want to catch up, the links can be found on the church's YouTube or Facebook page. So if you want to catch up with this study, feel free. But we're going to go ahead and dive on into Ephesians chapter 5. Follow God's example in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love for others, following the example of Christ, who loved you and gave his life as a sacrifice to take away your sin. And God was pleased because the sacrifice was like a sweet perfume to him. Let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. Such sins have no place among God's people. Obs obs obscene stories, foolish talk, and coarse jokes. They are not for you. Instead, let there be thankfulness to God. You can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God. For a greedy person is really an idolater who worships the things of this world. Do not be fooled by those who try to excuse their, these sins. For the terrible anger of God comes upon all who disobey him. Don't practice in these things in the things these people do. For though your hearts were once full of darkness, yet now they were full of light from the Lord, and your behavior shows should show it. For this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness in darkness instead rebuke them and expose them it is shameful even to talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret but when the light shines on them it becomes clear how evil these things are and where your light shines it will expose their evil deeds this is why it says awake O sleeper rise up from the dead and Christ will give you light so be careful how you live not as fools but as those who are wise, make the most of every opportunity for doing good in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly and try to understand, but try to understand what the Lord wants you to do. Do not be drunk on wine because it will ruin your life. Instead, let the Holy Spirit fill and control you. Then you will sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, making music to God in your heart. And you will always give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And further, you will submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. You wives will submit to your husbands as you do to the Lord. For a husband is the head of his wife, as Christ is the head of the body, the church. He gives, he gave his life to be her savior. And the church submits to Christ as a wife submits to her husband in everything. And you husbands must love your wives the same with the same love that Christ showed for the church. He gave up his life to make her the body clean, washed by baptism in God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man, it is actually loving himself when he loves his wife. No one hates his own body, but lovingly cares for it, just as Christ cares for his body, which is the church, and we are his body. As the scriptures say, a man leaves his father and mother and is joined with his wife, and the two are united as one. This is the, this is the great mystery, but it is illust an illustration of the way that Christ and the church are one. So again, I say to each man, you must love your wife as you love yourself, and a wife must respect her husband. So I love, the, I love how God's timing seems to work in some of these things, as um, by the time this video is coming out, this should be Friday. I'm recording a few of these in advance because my week's a little busy, but this should come out Friday, and tomorrow, Saturday, my sister's actually getting married, so... Congratulations, Julie and Alex, obey, obey this stuff on marriage because it's so beautiful when we, we see people who truly care about each other the same way that Christ cares about the church. 
But as I'm reading through this, I have some thoughts that come to mind. And the first one is this. I love where it talks about how we should look for every opportunity to do good deeds in these evil days. We are filled with the power of the Spirit. The Spirit of God lives within each and every one of us. And I think it's really easy for us to look around the world that we live in and see that there is hurt, that there is brokenness, that there is sorrow, that there are all of these things. But in this letter, Paul is exclaiming, the Spirit wants us to look for ways where we can help and do good. So my first question for you is this, how are we finding places where we can do good and we can help? For some people, it might be really easy of, oh, I'm doing this, 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 this. But others might be, I don't know how I can help. And my encouragement to you is think about it, pray about it, and listen to what God is saying. The second thing I kind of want to point out is, I love how, where was it? Do, 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 do. I just had it and it went away. Oh, there's a really powerful challenge on how we're called to live. I know that I'm guilty at times of maybe using coarse jokes or language that I shouldn't. I'm sure that there are things that were listed in there that you might go, oh yeah, that, that's me. And my second question challenge you was how are we, how are we respecting how God is calling us to live? What do we do to eliminate those coarse jokes from and, and harsh language from our vocabulary? How are we not doing what people who still live in darkness do? How are we safeguarding ourselves from them? And even more to that is, how are we being the light that is exposing the darkness? So those are my questions for you today. Um, again, I've really been enjoying the book of Ephesians. There's a lot of really good wisdom in here. And again, with by the time this comes out, Julie, Alex, congratulations on your wedding tomorrow. Yay. Um, but yeah, that's what I've got for Ephesians chapter 5. I want to pray us out, and I'll let you all get back to your day. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all you do for us day in and day out. God, I cannot begin to thank you for the sacrifice you made by sending your Son. God, I pray that you're at work in all of our hearts and all of our minds and all of our lives. God, illuminate those things that need to be illuminated and help us be your light. Help us find places where we can help others in these dark and evil days. God, we thank you for the gifts that you give us day in and day out. We thank you that you loved us. Um, you became the head of the church. God, help us be part of the body that serves you. In your son's name, amen. So that's all I've got for today. I'll see you all again tomorrow. And until then, take care.